ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಶಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬಿಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಬಾಲಿ ಬಾರಿ ಯಶೋಧಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋಧಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ಬನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಜಯ ಗುರು ದೇವ ಗುರುದೇವ ಜಯ ಗುರುದೇವ ಚಲೋ ಪ್ರಭಾದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಅನಂತಗುಡಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗ್ರಂಥರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಸಂವೇದ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೋ ಪ್ರಮಾನಂದೇ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಗೋ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಷ್ಟ ದಸಂಬಲ್ ಗೋಡಿ ಸರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಷ್ಟ ದಸಂಬಲ್ ಗೋಡಿ ಸರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಷ್ಟ ದಸಂ
ఆల్ గ్లోరీస్ టు శ్రీ శ్రీ గురు అండ్ గోరంగ్ ఆల్ గ్లోరీస్ టు శ్రీ ప్రభుపాద్ హరే కృష్ణ ప్రహ్లాద్ నంద ప్రభు నైస్ టు సీ యూ ఓల్ హరి ఓల్ నైస్ ఐ ఆన్ ద ఫ్రీవే సో ఐ హావ్ జస్ట్ ఓకే యా థాంక్ యూ థాంక్ యూ ఫర్ జాయినింగ్ హరి ఓల్ హరి ఓల్ హరే కృష్ణ మాదర్ రోహిణి నైస్ టు సీ యూ అగైన్ టుడే ఐ సో యు ఎస్టర్డే ఇట్స్ నైస్ హరే కృష్ణ ప్రభు థాంక్ యూ హరే కృష్ణ జాయిన్ దిస్ క్లాస్ హరే కృష్ణ వెరీ నైస్ థాంక్ యూ welcome mother shevika devi dasi yesterday also i met her mother puja hari krishna mother shivani and kear prabhu hari krishna mother nice to see you hari krishna hari krishna pranam so let us begin our today bhagavad bhagavad gita class by chanting three times om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so you can fold your hand and pray to lord vasudev to clear and purify our consciousness so that we can understand this bhagavad gita as it is the divine love message of the lord for each of us om namo bhagavate vasudevaya నమ భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమ భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ నారాయణం నమస్కృత నరంచరోత్తమ దేవి సరస్వతీ వ్యాసం తోజా వీరే నష్ట ప్రాయసు అభద్రేషు నిత్యం భాగవత సేవయా భగవతి ఉత్తమ శ్లోకే భక్తిర్భవతి నైష్టీ ముఖం కరతి వాచాలం పంగుల్లంగాయతే గిరిం జత్క్రీపాతమహం వందే శ్రీ గురు దినతారిణం శ్రీ చైతన్న ఈశ్వరం పరమానంద మాధవం నమా ఓం విష్ణుపదాయ కృష్ణ ప్రేష్టాయ భూతలే శ్రీమతే భక్తి వేదాంత సామినీతి నామినే నమస్తే సరస్వతీ దేవి గౌరవాణి ప్రచారిణే నిర్విశేష సున్న బాధి పశ్చత్ దేశతారిణి భంచాకల్పతరూవేశ కృపా సింధు భయవచ ప్రభుత్యాదైతగదాధర శివాసాది గౌరభక్తవింద హరే కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరే 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 రామ హరే రామ 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 హరే 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 కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరే 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 రామ హరే రామ 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 హరే 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 కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరే 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 రామ హరే రామ 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 హరే హరే సో భగవద్గీత చాప్టర్ సెవెన్ శ్రీల ప్రభుపాద్ అడ్రస్ ఎస్ జ్ఞాన విజ్ఞాన యోగ వెరీ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ జ్ఞాన విజ్ఞాన యోగ జ్ఞాన విజ్ఞాన యోగ హౌ కెన్ వి రిలేట్ టు దిస్ yoga so before we begin i want to give you little tips where we can take full advantage of this chapter and also um there is a confidential thing that um, once we grasp this chapter 7 and chapter 9 then we will really become 
completely equipped with full knowledge of Lord Krishna, Bhakti and Bhakta, importance of three entities, Lord Sri Krishna and Bhakti and Bhakta. So as I mentioned previously, this chapter illuminates three things. I hope we all remember those three things. One is knowledge of God, Krishna. What is knowledge of God, Krishna? This chapter will give us some illumination in our heart. And then the second point, this chapter also will talk about the process. How can we acquire transcendental knowledge in our heart? And once we acquire this transcendent knowledge, what will be the result? So this is very nice, isn't it? The knowledge of God, Krishna, and the process of attaining the knowledge, and after you receive the knowledge, what will be the result you are experiencing? So with that note, I'm going to say three things. This is from a practical experience, Vishwana Chakruti Thakur also writes that in order to be successful in our spiritual path, we need three components or you can say equipped. Uh, you have to be equipped with three, uh, like, like a uh, example, like a, if soldier goes to a war, now you may be the soldier may be a good expert shooter, but he forgot to carry the gun and he's facing the enemy. So now if you put that logic, what value of your having the gun in your house when you are facing the enemy in the war field? Really nothing, isn't it? You may be a good expert shooter, but you don't have the gun with you and you're facing the enemy. Oh, I kept the gun in my house, safe place, you know, safe deposit locked or whatever, cabinet. But what value is it? Nothing. Useless. You'll be dead. So in our spiritual path, with this knowledge, what we need to, uh, how we apply, we need to uh, remember these three things. First, we need bhakti shakti, power of devotion, power of devotion, three essential, you can say, uh, components in your life. Second is priti lakshan. Priti lakshan means symptom of loving exchanges with the other devotees. I may be progressing, but if I don't care other devotees, don't have a proper respect, who are you going to live with? Is God going to live with you like a... <laughs> because Krishna is surrounded by his devotees. He appreciate when we have a proper uh, uh, attitude to reciprocate with the devotees. So it is necessary that while we are acquiring this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, we should also develop loving exchange symptom of loving exchange is it compulsory it is not a, a option third dakshata expertise how are you going to apply this knowledge and how are you going to um, maintain your spiritual progress and go far go further uh, forward without any hindrance or challenges when uh, Prabhupada says, actually, each of us that join in Ishkan are also a preacher and also guru to others. So as a teacher or preacher will be equipped with these three, then what happens? You can attract other living being to stay in bhakti. 
if you do not if you do not have these three things you cannot attract other living being to krishna consciousness now if you say what happened if i don't care of bringing anybody in krishna consciousness i only care for my own salvation you're not going to please krishna much it may take few lives because until you come to this point that you need to share this krishna consciousness with others and this is what shila prabhupada wants chaitanya mahaprabhu wants he literally said mahaprabhu said directly achar karen keho na kare prachar prachar karen keho na kare achar achar prachar karah dui karya tumi sarva guru jagate rajya you must practice and preach okay so with that note i'm going to give a little bit little more there is a famous verse in bhagavatam 4.9.6 dhruva maharaj said because in case if you wonder what is the power of devotee has what is this bhakti substance that whether i have or not uh how do i know how do you detect okay we are progressing we are hearing we are practicing every day we are chanting we are offering our food to krishna how do you know how much shakti you have or whether you have a bhakti shakti or not so you can read it in bhagavatam 4.9.6 ja anta pravishya मम वाचम प्रश्वास संजीवाय अखिल शक्ति धरस धाम अन्ना हस्त चरण श्रवण तेगादीन प्रणाम नमो भगवते पुषाय दुब्बम दिस इज भागवत फोर डॉट नाइन डॉट सिक्स यू कैन लुक एट इट लेटर that dhruva mara said my dear lord you are all powerful after entering within me you have enlivened all my sleeping senses in case if you wonder whether krishna in your heart or super soul in your heart you can detect right now so dhruva mara said when krishna entered or paramatma merge into krishna then what happened he says you have enlivened all my sleeping senses my hands legs ear touch sensation life force especially my power of speech let me offer my respectful obeisances unto you these are the symptom you will be feeling when krishna appear in your heart as krishna not super soul super soul means judge krishna means reciprocal well wisher ultimate friend what is the right consciousness of a devotee at that time you will have a deep sense of shelter and gratitude to your spiritual master shila prabhupad an entire guru parampara you will feel like this prabhupad says i alone cannot practice or preach krishna consciousness but connecting to my spiritual master who brought out of illusion help me to chant the holy name to purify my heart of all anarthas and gave me my original identity in connection to krishna this is the feeling each of us will feel this is nice now each of us can check within us what will be the right consciousness of a devotee in ishkon a gratitude to guru what is that gratitude to guru this when you develop that gratitude to shiva prabhupada these awards 
what I have received through Guru Parampara by my spiritual master. At that time of initiation, a living entity or each of us has accepted that by Radharani uh, shelter to Krishna through the Guru Parampara. This is our conception. Nobody served Krishna directly. Radharani is the best servant. So accepting Guru and Guru Parampara means you are serving under their guidance. Through our spiritual master at that time, Tadatma means Srimati Radharani accept when our body to be completely spiritual. We offer ourselves and offering true through Guru Parampara, Srimati Radharani to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada in 1968 on Radhastomi day, Prabhupada says, well, we should pray to Radharani. Oh Radharani, please, please tell your beloved to allow me to serve. So we should pray to Radharani, according to Prabhupada, to pray for us to Krishna so that we can be completely liberated to serve their lotus feet of divine couple. So this is by, very nice. It's kind of deep sense of shelter, you know, gratitude. Next comes, you need strength to become exemplary and good preacher. How do you develop strength? Being exemplary. So when we talk about personal application in our sadhana, then when we talk about preaching, spiritual application, philosophical application, theoretical application, reach out to the other people. So our own personal sadhana becomes all important. Believe or not, in my own personal experience, when I have to speak uh, a, a Rotary Club in uh, Florida, they invited me, there are 50 members, and I have no idea about Rotary Club in America, what exactly they do. I have some idea. So I have to like force myself to study from the Googles. What are the Rotary Club, what they do, and how we can connect and benefit them. So of course, Krishna was there. I was praying to Prabhupada. And I remember I, I reveal what Krishna actually gave the philosophy and to help others is the ultimate um, pleasing to Krishna when we help ourselves and help others. Not just ourselves or others, but both. So then uh, we gave an example, and then I mentioned how Rotary Club does the same thing. And they actually plotted. They found like, wow, I, we didn't know. One president said, we didn't know the Hare Krishna philosophy is like uh, crown jewels of our Rotary Club. I say, yes, that's what we do. We help ourselves and we help others. But we don't help physically so much. We are interested to the soul who is the cause of all the loitering in the material world. So they appreciate it. So similarly, I found that I was thinking that in order, when you, when you like to talk to other devotee or preach to outsider, you always careful about yourself to be exemplary. How you behave, how you talk, you know, if you don't preach, sometimes, you know, I don't feel pressure. It's very interesting. But you feel pressure to correct yourself always when you are exposed to the outsider. So it's a good idea the way Mahaprabhu said we should be always thinking to deliver or distribute this Krishna consciousness. So what do you do? You do two things. Sadhana, focused full morning program gives you spiritual strength and you become an ideal example for newcomers. 
and sadachar. Sadachar means you bow to him and he, he bows down to you. You know, in the morning, even though I was staying in some devotee's house, but in the morning when we see, we say Hare Krishna, but that's not good enough. You should just bow down. So they also bow down. It's a good. So you admire that those devotees and they admire you. This is such a nice bond. Then second point is preaching. You preach with what? Preaching with what? What, what, do, you, what do you have with you that you're going to preach with? You preach with knowledge. So you have to pay attention when you hear Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam <clears throat> and make sure something can, you can realize, you can apply to you and it become realized knowledge. And then you have to have a conviction. When you apply in life, purifies your heart and serve realization. Understand how to apply in day-to-day -day life. Not like the philosophy in the sky and you're, you are standing in the earthly planet and you don't have a connection. Philosophy should not be like this. Like after you, know, you hear the philosophy, then you go back what you are doing and you forgot the whole philosophy. That's not Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is a lifestyle. We mold ourselves how we apply what we hear. And then third is <clears throat> compassion. Compassion means how to give the knowledge to newcomers in a way they can understand it, accept it, and relish it. If somebody say, I cannot make my cousin, like one devotee, um, I won't say the name, but not complain, but was expressing, said, oh, I cannot, I cannot uh, relate to my cousins. They live in New York, but I cannot talk because uh, they don't care. They don't want it. I said, who do we follow? We follow Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Nitananda Prabhu, has no end of mercy, and I don't have an end of mercy. In many instances, for an example, Tamal Krishna Maharaj said, we should write the letter against this devotee who, is, who left Ishkan and taking money from the life members. Can I write to all these life members, say, he's not our man, you should reject him? Prabhupada says, no. Say, but he's against, he said, he will be back. And of course, after a few months, again, he heard the news that he's keep on doing, he's not coming back, rather he's taking advantage of name of Ishkan. Prabhupada says, Nityananda Prabhu has no end of mercy and we should not have end of mercy. Tamal Krishnamara said, this is unbelievable. Your mercy has no end. Prabhupada said, yes, no end. Now, I was reading the other day, and it's interesting. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he could not deliver everybody in Navadip, in his own hometown. In his own hometown, he, he could not deliver everybody. So if someone of you cannot talk Krishna consciousness to your relative or friend, don't feel bad. Mahaprabhu also could not do it. But then you add up something. What you can do? He told Nityananda Prabhu, you go and preach those stubborn Bengalis. You know the word stubborn? I hope you all know what the stubborn means. People are not interested to hear about Krishna. Leave me alone. You do your things. I do my things. Don't bother me. This is the feeling. But what did Nitanda Prabhu do? Now you can see why Ma Prabhupada is glorifying Nitanda Prabhu. Nitanda Prabhu, Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes, No diyago drume Nitananda Mahajan, Pati achena mahatta jibera karan. 
Nitando Prabhu opened the market. He did not distribute just like this. He opened a market. Now, why it is called market? Do you know why it's called market? When you want to sell something in market, what do you do? You pack the merchandise very nicely. You clean the merchandise very nice, attractive, so people will buy it. You don't take a, you know, like a looks ugly, you know, display case is ugly. No, you have a nice, shiny, clean display case. You put your merchandise in a nice box or nice case. You attract people and you talk about it. Oh, this is a special price. 40% discount for you. All kinds of stuff. These are called market. Means each of us have to go out of our traditional way. Cater the, for my friend or for our relatives to buy this Krishna consciousness. They will not take it by your demand or command. Nitanda Prabhu open a market means you have to create a facility. You can call your cousin who is not interested. He said, would you like to come? I, have, I, have, I, I was going to explore cake feast. I was going to make a few pieces of cakes. I would like to, you know, you are my cousin. I want to give you some uh, fresh baked cake by me. Would you mind of coming and delight in it? You'll see they will come. Because they're not coming for prasadam. They're coming for cake. But they're going to eat prasadam. Then this way what happened? Their hearts soften after honoring prasadam. And then you'll see there's a new window open. That you could preach and bring them closer and closer and closer. So this is a uh, uh, attitudes set up and, and we have to curb. So this is a very nice. Now with that note, I'm going to go to today's seven chapter. Text, let's see. We did up to seven, no, eight. Last week we did eight. And... I think I ended with uh, one question or maybe I didn't answer, I forgot. If you have a faith in yourself versus if you have a faith in Prabhupada and Krishna, what is the difference? Then we're going to start 9, 7.9 today. So we should remember that confidence is essential for doing anything challenging. Those with confidence have an energy and magnetism. Now energy that enables them to push beyond the boundaries that limit most other people. Now magnetism, you know magnetism like to attract Magnetism that draws others to be with them and to stretch themselves with them. Still, confidence can easily morph into arrogance where people think that they know everything and that they are source of their abilities and energies. When their abilities desert them, as happens to even the most talented people, sooner or later, they end up unable to process that loss. Having invested their self-worth, even their self-identity in their capacity to do challenging things, they cannot face themselves, live alone, face the world. And it's so true, I saw that. So what do you do for them? For them, it is vital to remember 
that Bhagavad Gita inside that our abilities are coming from Krishna, not on our own. To lay sole claim to our ability, please remember Mother Saint Prabhu's is sign of ignorance. If you say, I am doing everything, oh, be careful. Actually, there should be red flag immediately pops in front of you. Means danger, don't think like that. So devotionally inclined, understand that their abilities come from Krishna. But they may go too far on the other side by believing that they are utterly worthless. I don't know if you ever saw that, you know, some devotee thinks, oh, everything is Krishna doing. Everything is Krishna, Krishna. Yeah, God is doing everything. That is also dangerous. Why? While humility, which is an essential spiritual virtue, <coughs> means to not to be drunk with ego. It doesn't mean that we cannot do anything. That would make us important. Important is also bad. So Bhagavad Gita urges Arjuna to become an instrument of the divine for changing the world order towards greater virtue. Now, implicit in this call is the understanding that we all have the potential to be instrument of the divine. Even if we believe that we are unqualified, you know, out of humility, we say, oh, Prabhu or Mata, I'm in the last, I'm just an insignificant, wretched soul. And if you keep on bragging, you're paying too much attention to yourself instead of God. That is also bad. Self-pity is not a humility. We talked also about that. <laughs> so even if we believe that we are unqualified, our lack of qualification is not greater than God's capacity to give us that qualification. So by focusing on our potential as conscious being, unit of consciousness, we are precious parts of God. We can inspire to do something worthwhile with what he has given us. So I hope you all can take away like this. Faith in yourself without faith in Krishna is ignorant. And faith in Krishna without faith in yourself is important. So with that note, let us begin 7.9. Who would like to help me or help us to read the sloka and the translation? And the purple. Okay, Mother Puja raised her hand. Go ahead, Mother Puja. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Nandavat Pranam. 7.9. Punyo Gandha Prithvyam Scha Tejas Jasme Vibhavasho Jivanam Sarva Bhuteshu. Tapas chasmi tapas vishu. Synonyms. Punya, original. Gandha, fragrance. Prithivyam, in the earth. Cha, also. Teja, heat. Cha, also. Asmi, I am. Vibhavasho, in the fire. Jivanam, life. Sarva, in all, Bhuteshu, living entities, Tapaha, penance, Cha, also, Asmi, I am, Tapas Vishu, in those who practice penance. Translation, Meshrila Prabhupada. I am the original fragrance of the earth, and I am the heat in fire. I am the life of all that lives. 
and I am the penances of all ascetics. Purport Punya means that which is not decomposed. Punya is original. Everything in the material world has a certain flavor or fragrance, as the flavor and fragrance in a flower or in the earth, in water, in fire, in air, etc. The uncontaminated flavor, the original flavor, which permeates everything, is Krishna. Similarly, everything has a particular original taste, and this taste can be changed by the mixture of chemicals. So everything original has some smell, some fragrance, and some taste. Vibhavashu means fire. Without fire, we cannot run factories, we cannot cook, etc. And that fire is Krishna. The heat in the fire is Krishna. According to Vedic medicine, indigestion is due to a low temperature in the belly. So even for digestion, fire is needed. In Krishna consciousness, we become aware that earth, water, fire, air, and every active principle, all chemicals, and all material elements are due to Krishna. The duration of man's life is also due to Krishna. Therefore, by the grace of Krishna, man can prolong his life or diminish it. So Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere. Hare Krishna. Very nice. Very nice parbord. <laughs> Prabhupada is so wonderful. So these bars, we are going to break the word meaning. Punna Ganda Piti Bamcha, I am the fragrance of the earth. Tejas Chasmi Vibhavasho. Vibhavasho refers to fire. I am the heat of the fire. Jivanam Sarva Bhuteshu, I am the life of all that lives. Tapas chasmi, tapas shishu. I'm the austerity of the austere. So we discussed earlier, last week, no, uh, week before, or maybe last week, last week, that punna ganda pitibha, what does this refer? When we discuss how sense object associated with earth is fragrance in the sanka system of evaluation, so in that sense, Punna Ganda Pritibhamcha refers to how the fragrance is the essence of the earth. And that fragrance is manifested through Krishna. This is beautiful. You know, this part of the Bhagavad Gita is so nice. So we see that this fragrance is extraordinary. How? In the sense that we may plant a seed in earth. I'm sure you all have some experience, whether you planted yourself or you heard how somebody did. The seed may not be having any fragrance because I saw some seed don't have any smell, dry, you know, piece of something. But then, we nourish the seed with water, and that also doesn't have any fragrance. But if we are doing any horticulture or people gardening also say, we're planting the trees, which will be blossoming flower. So when flower comes out at that time, flower has charming fragrance, like gardenia. I remember Mayapur I used to have a gardenia. It's very funny. Somebody says all the colorful flower don't have much smell, but all the white flower, colorless flower, white, has the most fragrance. If you like see jasmine, gardenia, they have so heavy fragrance and they're just white color, no multicolor. Whereas uh, what they call hibiscus, uh, you know, red, magenta, but there is no fragrance at all. 
it's like a little boring when you smell them because there's no fragrance. But they look attractive. <clears throat> so when flower comes out, at that time, flower has charming fragrance. Where are these fragrance coming from? The fragrance is not there in the seed. The fragrance is not there in water. Yet, when we put the seed and nourish with water, the fragrance comes from the earth. It makes sense? Especially when the first rain comes, that time we also, we can feel the fragrance of earth. This is general example for understanding from our own experience, how fragrance is associated with the planet earth. The point is there is experiential understanding that there is a conceptual understanding. Now in Sanko, fragrance is associated with the planet Earth, Bhumi Devi, Mother Earth. Tejas Chasmi Vibhavasu. Now Vibhavasu means here, the next uh, line, it says fire. So actually with sun and moon, we talk about light first of all, sun also gives heat and the moonlight is considered to be cooling. But generally we talk about sun in terms of light primarily. Secondarily, of course, heat is also important. So here Sri Krishna is distinguishing, I am the light of the sun and I'm the heat of fire. You know, he distinctly said separately. In either way, the point is how there are various things in this world and everything is having some essential characteristics which are important for us. So when it is cold, that time people light a fire and we have a heating system which again involves fire giving heat. So I am heat of fire means we are attracting towards fire because it has its essential elements of heat. Krishna says, I am that heat. Then he says, Jivanam Sarva Bhuteshu. So life is present in all living being. Sarva Bhuteshu, the word. Actually life itself is a great mystery. In the perspective of modern science, how is life comes about? Oh my God, so many scientists reject the conception of soul because they say if soul is there, how the soul affect matter? Their idea is soul is spiritual. And <coughs> because the soul is spiritual, so being spiritual soul cannot affect matter. Because the idea is matter is affected by material things. So how is soul affect matter? That is the problem which perplexed Western thought. And because of that in the Western intellectual history, soul is largely neglected. One psychiatrist, Sandra Ray, she used to teach in the UF. She told me personally that soul, the word soul, you cannot introduce in the American academic world. They don't want to accept it. Even though they know it solves most of the critical problem, but they don't want to accept. Vedic conception is Actually, the soul and matter interact through super soul. We should remember that. <clears throat> super soul is the controller of both matter and spirit. Super soul can affect matter. And of course, super soul can use material mechanism also to affect matter. That mechanism is misidentification. But the point is what defines all living being is life. Where does that life comes from? Ultimately, that life comes from Krishna. 
the soul is part of Krishna. The arrangement by which soul is able to manifest the life through matter, that is also come from Krishna. That's why it's called Jivanam Sarvabhuteshu. And then the next one, he says, Tapas Chasmi, Tapas Shishu. Now, Tapas Shashi refer who are austere. Taposha, one who does austerity. So capacity for austerity is also extraordinary. Like for an example, <clears throat> doing Nirjal Akadashi. I think we had Nirjal, uh, no, Akadashi was day before yesterday, if I recall. Doing Nirjal Akadashi for one day is difficult, but some people will do Nirjala on every Akadashi or fast by only taking water every Akadashi. Some people can fast for three days. I met a guy who did fasting for 15 days. In Vaishishta Muni Ashram, there were many sages and some of them were surviving just on air. That is also recorded in the Shastra. So other were surviving only on water. It is mentioned that among the austere sages, the least austere we are living only on leaves. Now, today, if someone has to live on leaves, only <laughs> we will be amazed what kind of capacity the person would be having. No, we'll be doubting maybe. So the point is capacity for austerity is extraordinary. And the capacity for austerity ultimately comes from Krishna. This is what Krishna is trying to tell us. So, so Krishna can give different abilities to different people. He can give capacity of austerities to certain people. So when we see certain people with certain attributes, we should not become envious of seeing those attributes in people. But we should see that those attributes are coming from Krishna. That way we can make spiritual advancement by connecting everything with Krishna. Now, any, another thing important about Jivanam Sarva Bhuteshu is actually life and death is not in our hands. I hope you all believe that. Doctors treats, but it is God who heals. Doctor can do surgery, gives medicine, etc. Whatever else is required, but ultimately, medicine is not an exact science. Exact science is when we say, you take this chemical, mix it with another chemical, then exactly you will get this result. But in medical science, doctors say you take this medicine and you will be cured. But everyone is not cured by taking that medicine. Prahlad Ananda Prabhu is there. He's a, he was a doctor. I'm sure he will confirm something with that. <clears throat> so different people have a different background. Who knows what infection they have. How one can think, interact with other internally and produce certain result, we cannot say. That is why there are many examples of people who got small disease, which can be very easily cured, but it becomes so severe that the person dies despite best medicine and best doctor. And that is also seen in our life, in my own life, I saw that. So on the other hand, someone will have terrible disease and the doctor says that you are going to die in six months. Like the pujaris in Radha uh, Madan Mohan temple. When he was 17 years old, he told us, we went for a parikrama in 1980s. He was an old man. He said, 17 years old, I got cancer. But those days cancer, don't know, nobody knows what medicine. So somebody told him, go to Vrindavan, forget it. You, you're not going to live, you're going to die. And we met him when he was 90, 
two years old. He's supposed to die when he was 17 years old. But he lived whole life. He was a head pujari in Madan Mohan temple. So that person outlives the doctor. So how does this happen? Life and death, Prabhus and mothers, are ultimately not in our hands. Life and death are ultimately given by Sri Krishna. This is what the word in this verse says. Jivanam Sarva Bhutesh. Sri Krishna is the giver of life. Krishna is ultimate taker of life. So it is not that Sri Krishna has, you know, vengeance against someone. So Krishna takes life. But karmic reaction of every soul are given by different ways by Krishna. Again, Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere. So it is interesting, isn't it? Srila Prabhupada personifies Krishna consciousness here. So instead of saying that we can be active in Krishna consciousness in every sphere, Srila Prabhupada is saying Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere. You wonder what he was thinking. You could ask him when he comes in your dream or sometime. That means the capacity for Krishna consciousness is latent in every sphere. So we have to just utilize the capacity. When we utilize the capacity, we can become Krishna conscious also. So we will do text 10. Uh, let's see if we have time. We have, a, we have some time. Who would like to read the text 10? Mother Rohini, would you like to read the text 10? Sure. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Pijamam sarva bhutanam, vidhi parta sanatanam, budhir budhi matam asmi, te just te just vinam aham, pijam the seed, mam me, sarva bhutanam of all living entities, vidhi try to understand, parta o son of prata, sanatanam. Original, eternal, buddhi, intelligence, buddhi matam of the intelligence, asmi, I am, tejaha, prowess, tejasvinam of the powerful, aham, I am. O son of Prata, know that I am the original seed of all existences, the intelligence of the intelligent, and the prowess of all powerful men. Purport. Bijam means seed. Krishna is the seed of everything. There are various living entities movable and inert. Birds, beasts, men, and many other living creatures are moving living entities. Trees and plants, however, are inert. They cannot move, but only stand. Every entity is contained within the scope of 8,400,000 species of life. Some of them are moving and some of them are inert. In all cases, however, the seed of their life is Krishna. As stated in Vedic literature, Brahman, or the supreme absolute truth, is that from which everything is emanating. Krishna is para Brahman, the supreme spirit. Brahman is impersonal, and para Brahman is personal. Impersonal Brahman is situated in the personal aspect. That is stated in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, originally, Krishna is the source of everything. He is the root, as the root of a tree maintains the whole tree. Krishna, being the original root of all things, maintains everything in this material manifestation. This is also confirmed in the Vedic literature, Katha Upanishad 2.2.13. He is the prime eternal among all eternals. He is the supreme living entity of all living entities. And he alone is maintaining all life. One cannot do anything without intelligence. And Krishna also says that he is the root of all intelligence. 
unless a person is intelligent, he cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very nice. Thank you. Krishna is the root of all intelligence. Very nice. Unless a person is intelligent, he cannot understand the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> so Krishna is the root of all intelligence and we have to be intelligent to understand him. Nice. So here, very interestingly, let's discuss a few minutes on this. Here, Sri Krishna talks about three more attributes from the previous uh, sloka. So making total how many? Twelve. Twelve now, so far I got. Now here he says, Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam. I am the seed of all living beings. I am the eternal seed. Imperishable seed. Indestructible seed. What does it mean? This can be connected with our earlier discussion of Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnamed Purnamataya Purnameva Vasishate. So, this is a very interesting. When we contemplate, or no, when uh, um, you can say complete comes out of complete. What remains is complete. One plus one is equal to one. One minus one is equal to one. What kind of math is that? So normally when we, the seed rise to something, say tree, the seed no longer exists. The seed gets transformed into tree. Similarly, when an egg is formed into embryo, embryo gives rise to a child. The embryo no longer exists. So Sri Krishna says normally the seed does not exist and one seed gives only one kind of tree. But Sri Krishna says, I am the seed which gives all kinds of tree. That means all living beings which exist comes out of me. Also, he says, I am the seed which never gets exhausted. It's very fascinating. Sanatana. So all living beings, all the varieties which exist comes from Sri Krishna. Still, Sri Krishna remains the original truth. Krishna remains Sanatana, imperishable truth. The other word Krishna says, Buddhi, Buddhi, Matam, Shmi. Sri Krishna says, I'm the intelligent of the intelligence. Some people have great intelligence. The way they uh, recollect, the way they express, the way they analyze to impress people. That is def defining characteristics of brilliant people, their brilliance, their intellect. So where does this come from? This comes from Sri Krishna. And similarly, another word he used, Tejas, Tejas Shinam Aham. Means I am the power of the powerful. Some people are powerful. Was it Michael Tyson or here, there, you say, they're like a boxer or uh, wrestler or something like that. Uh, people are powerful. They have tremendous body, you know, macho exercise they do. They, they are one punch can knock out somebody else. That's also happened. So people may be attracted to such people, but ultimately we have to understand this power comes from Sri Krishna. Then Srila Prabhupada talks about Nitoya Nitto Nitto Nam Chetanas Chetana Nam verse. So that we will touch on the next verse. Uh, we can do one more, maybe, maybe. Why not? Maybe. 6.34. Let's see. 
Okay, one more sloka. Who would like to do? Anyone? Volunteer? I'll do that, Prabhuji. All right, Prahlad Prabhu, you are back <laughs> in home. Yes. <laughs> so we are on the 11th sloka, is that correct? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Balam balvatam chaham kamaraga vivarjitam dharma viruddho bhutesu kamo asme bharatar sabha. <clears throat> A balam means strength, balvatam of the strong, cha and aham, I am, kama, passion, raga and attachment, vivarjitam, devoid of. Dharma aviruddha, not against religious principles. Bhutesu, in all beings. Kama, sex life. Asmi, I am. Bharatar Sabha, O Lord of the Bharats. Translation by His Divine Grace, Bhakti Vedanta Sahaja Sri Prabhupada, Prabhupada Ki Jai. I am the strength of the strong, devoid of passion and desire. I am sex life, which is not contrary to religious principles. O Lord of the Bharats, Arjun, Parpat. The strong man's strength should be applied to, pro to protect the weak, not for personal aggression. Similarly, sex life according to religious principles of dharma should be for the propagation of children, not otherwise. The responsibility of parents is then to make their offspring Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So till now, Sri Krishna talked about 12 attributes we discussed last three slokas. Now he's talking two more in this verse. Balam balavatam chaham. Krishna says, I'm the strength of straw of the strong. What kind of strength? Kama raga vibarjitam. That which is free from desire and attachment. Then he says, dharma viruddha bhuteshu. That which is viruddha not opposed to dharma, that kind of karma, that kind of desire I am. Very fine line. This is interesting that Krishna used the word karma twice in this verse. The first time he uses in 711. So first he has talked about strength. So strength should be freed from desire. And attachment, so Kshatriya should act as par dharma. They should not act as protector. Kshatra, trayate iti kshatriyas. Those who protect others from heart, kheta, kesh, kheta, kshatriya, you know the word kshatriya. Kheta is heart. They are called kshatriyas. Dharma viruddha bhuteshu kama shmi bharatasho. Now Krishna has used kama again in the next line. What he is saying over here? He is saying that kama which is not contrary to dharma. I am that. What does this mean? Actually there is a dharma artha kama moksha. So all these are part of life. It is not that Kama has to be entirely given up. Now, when we talk about Kama, we refer to various things and we have to look at the context. Here, in same verse, Kama is used twice. In the first part, Krishna is saying, one should be free from Kama. Then he is saying, I am Kama's. So what he is referring to here, you may think. So the word kama in both cases does not have the same meaning. First kama referred to the desire in general and desire and attachment which one should give up while employing one's strength. Now desire in terms of selfish desire. Then when Sri Krishna is talking about kama, He's talking about kama as one of the purushartha. Purush plus artha. The purpose of human being. Purushas. So in the Mahabharata, when Narad Muni meets Judhisthi Maharaj, he inquires from him. So normally, the modes of inquiry 
are different for grihastha and for sannyasis when dasharath maharaj met and honored vishamitra uh, muni then he asked him how are you progressing on your conquest of rebirth propas talks about it few times in his lectures the purpose of sannyas is that the person renounces the world had the cycle of birth and death and go back to the spiritual world so the whole idea is to conquering rebirth but when narad muni meet yudhishthir maharaj he is asking o king are you having a balance between religion profit and pleasure which is dharma artha kama and he says those who perceive only religion give up profit and pleasure and any combination of this are all living imbalance it's a very wonderful teaching for the householder imbalanced lives they will not be satisfied but if they balance this they can be satisfied so when talk about ortho it is not just bank balance i hope we all understand that <laughs> yeah, of course modern world even devotee thinks ortho means bank balance no ortho is holistic prosperity in terms of having the necessity of life without having too much anxiety and having natural comforts so vrindavan is a place of ortho it is comfortable place rajabashi work very hard but they are also comfortable dharma artha kama kama does not only refer to sensual gratification or sense gratification but one overall satisfaction in family life here when krishna is saying dharma viruddha bhuteshu kama asmi bharata arshava he is saying that kama the sex life which is not contrary to dharma that i am bharata arshava i am that what is referred to this actually referred to how krishna is encouraging arjuna to recognize that in all aspect of life one can perceive his presence so when <clears throat> within uh, precedence of dharma kama and ortho is prescribed then the kama is not mundane that kama actually be divine so some people say sex taboo in vedic culture tabu is about which we should not talk i don't know maybe none of you ever face but some family like they don't want to talk about sex it's like a tabu this is not something to talk in the family they will say it is considered to be very bad no sex is considered to be manifestation of divine but when it is manifestation of divine when it should be understood that krishna is stating here it should be understood properly actually when people glamorize sex they trivialize it how it is when people glamorize it in their imagination more and more then what is the glamorization entered on it is centered primarily on looks and physical contact and pleasure so what is the pleasure which most glamorization of ultimate depicts on that pleasure is generally secretion reception or you can say ejection of chemicals and that's all that so more people glamorize sex in their imagination the more they trivialize it in their life because that which can be experience of god if it is done under the precedence of dharma that becomes reduced to something just physical it it, it becomes um tools you can say for some physical release that's all so that is just civilization of sex so it is not considered taboo 
and Vedic culture is not against it. Sex is natural part of life, but it has to be kept as proper part of the life, not made whole central purpose of life. Not made constant object of thought, not made into trivial activities. Advertising industry nowadays, they do that. People writing cheap comments in public toilets, social media, like uh, YouTube, etc., internet, Prawn is the biggest industry of present time. One gentleman came on the Mangalarti, first time in his life to the temple. And after talking for a while, he said he was addicted to prawn. He, he, he wants to get out. He doesn't know how to get out. So somebody said, maybe the Hare Krishnas, they are like, they, they have a very discipline and control. So he came. It was in, very interesting that even outsider people knows about the Hare Krishna's, what we do. So as just one does for gaining little bit of release, it is dharmic activity when done in the precedence of dharma. So Krishna is saying, abhiruddha bhuteshu kamashmi. When it is not opposed to dharma, then that sex life is actually experienced by Krishna, experience of Krishna. So we'll end here for now. If anyone has any comment or takeaway. Uh, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, it reminds me of one incident I read about Sri Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in Mayapur and uh, he was sitting in one of his rooms and there was a brahmachari or sannyasi with him. And meanwhile, his sister, her name was uh, Bhautarin. She came and, you know, uh, she started talking with Prabhupada. She sat somewhere near the desk there. And then that Brahmachari, who was supposed to be there, he went out. All right. So Prabhupada immediately called him back. He said, you should not leave place here. You know, even if she's my sister, you should sit here. Like that. So, you know, Prabhupada is how disciplined he is about, you know, the relation between man and a woman, whether it's a mother or sister or whoever. But you know, he's so strictly following the Vedic, Vedic you know, etiquette as a sannyasi, or even you know, as a guru and all these, all these etiquettes are there. Even in even Vedic marriages, you know, when you get married, uh, everybody knows, you know, that now this boy and girl are married, they're going to have sex, right? But everybody knows, in fact, you know, there is some kind of sanskar there uh, by which, you know, even very nice meal uh, is, proved, uh, is uh, you know, made and given to the boy and like that. All this kind of, and there is a, there is a, we do known as PT in Gujarati, we call it PT. Means, you know, they apply the, what they call haldar, uh, haldi, you know, haldi. Tasmatic. Turmeric. <laughs> they apply uh, just to make the boy and the girl uh, sexually attractive, you know. And all this is accepted as norm. You know, uh, nobody is ashamed about all these things. So this is called dharma aviruddha kama. Yes. So that, that's what it is. Yeah. Thank you very much. For very good. Time. Thank you. Mother Aruni, you have raised hand. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Um, so, you know, uh, in this uh, lecture today, you also read that um, sex should only be for procreation, but no one follows that. It's, it's not like you had uh, one child or two children and then you stop having relationship. It doesn't, um, I think, I, I don't know in Hari, you know, the couples that are married in um, um, what is gone also, <laughs> I don't know if it's just, you know, once or twice. We, you, have to, we have to see mother according to their level of consciousness, how elevated uh, each devotee even. So we have to see there is a, the purpose is to become Krishna conscious. Now, if somebody has a bad, bad scar that he has no other way. I give an example of Srila Prabhupada. 
when he was in Mayapur, there was a one uh, American uh, devotee, American body, Western body devotees. And in Lotus building, if you go there even till today, you go from the ground floor as you come out from, uh, you know, you walk. So there's a steps goes and then there's a flat standing spot and then you go to the first floor. So Prabhupada always used to stand there and he looked at back, who else, who is walking with me? So many dozens of boys and girls. So he looked at and he pointed out a devotee. He told little, uh, kind of upset way. He said, why you went to prostitute last night? Everybody was shocked. Even when I heard this, I was shocked because I was in Mayapur for 12 years. I didn't know there is a prostitution in Mayapur. I never heard even. <laughs> Only from Prabhupada's conversation with that devotee. And everybody was shocked for two reasons. One is they didn't know there is a prostitution in Mayapur those days. Hardly any devotee were there. And second is, uh, how did Prabhupada know? Of course, nobody asked. But the devotee was so nice. He came with the tears in his eye in front of Prabhupada. And he told, he said, I have a difficult to control my urges. And then Prabhupada said, but you have a wife. He said, yes, but she is following you so strictly. She said, without procreation of child, no sex. Then Jayapataka Maharaj, he remembers very well. Even he was shocked. He said he had no idea how Prabhupada found out, how Prabhupada knew everything about my there is a prostitution. And it was fact because that devotee confessed, yes, he went at the middle of the night somewhere, I guess. He said, uh, the Prabhupada uh, paused for a few minutes. He closed his eye and he said, that's all right. You can have sex with your wife when you cannot control. But don't go to prostitute. It is not a good thing for a devotee to do that. So my point is from that what I learned. And I remember we had a talk. Jabada Maharaj also agreed that it depends on each individual. But process of chanting and endeavoring to progress has to be intact. Eventually, Krishna will purify us. So we have to be careful not to be judgmental, knowing that they may be breaking the... We can pray and encourage them to go on chanting more or do more purification. Some austerity is required. I hope that gives you some idea. Yeah, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Thank Krishna. You. Thank you. Kher Prabhu, nice to see you. You are in back to Tampa. Uh, we are in Alachua, Prabhuji. Oh, you are in Alachua. I am in New York. Yeah, I know that today actually I didn't see you in Monday actually. So I, I came to the morning. So, so the Hare Krishna Prabhuji, my humble obeisances to the Lotus feet. So Prabhuji, in a, uh, like one curiosity, in the, in the beginning, you said about preaching and you talked about that um, uh, we should uh, you not know, try to uh, convince Krishna consciousness to the relatives or friends or something like that. But at the same time, you also said that, okay, no, uh, they, should not be, they should not be completely against okay. But Prabhuji, <clears throat> also there is, uh, there are 10 different offenses for the Nama Aparat, right? That's what we call it is. So into that Nama Aparat, it says that one of the offenses, like we should not uh, talk about Krishna to the non-devotees or you know, some people, right? I don't know what does it mean. So isn't it conflicting statement probably when we say that okay, we want to convince to the different people but at the same time, they don't want to listen. So aren't we doing any offense? Is a one part of, uh, like one of the offense of the Nama Pala? Are you talking about the ninth offense? Preaching to the faithless person. Correct, yeah, yeah. 
kind of yeah that's true what you are saying is true but at the same time we are following lord chaitanya mahaprabhu mahaprabhu says jare dekho tare kaha krishna upadesh we are not talking about the inner meaning deeply but mahaprabhu says whoever you meet you must encourage or inspire them in krishna consciousness krishna upadesh you should instruct them about krishna so as a follower of mahaprabhu we can do that there is no offense mm -hmm. but separately from that there could be offense so we have to be careful yes we have to be very careful but at the same time we are following mahaprabhu and prabhupad and prabhupad actually said this what you are thinking prabhupad actually said this one place yes there is a offense but we are following our guru varga lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and they they will hopefully always protect us from the offense but it is more important to preach than worried about the offense because uh, if we are following prabhupada's instruction then automatically our uh, connection with krishna through holy name it will purify our heart and we will uh, trap or some way we can give them without committing offense you can create an atmosphere we don't talk about secret meaning of the hari krishna maha mantra yeah. you know we don't have to say that we can say if you are struggling in life if you want to elevate your consciousness if you want to this is the dharma of kali yuga just chant hari krishna that's all simple thing you can say and this will be wonderful okay so after that if they follow or not it doesn't matter like it, it, it doesn't it, that's a separate thing right? that's between krishna and them okay. we do our part and krishna takes care from there okay and, so and we should we should keep on preaching though that's my bottom line okay but how about the people you know who don't want to listen about krishna at all then we just give them little prasadam or pray for okay. them we can smile at them it doesn't cost much i hope okay all right thank you so much for thank you thank you ಮಾಯಾವಾದಿ you should avoid actually because they can disturb your mind thank you everyone hare krishna looking forward to see you all next wednesday hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare bancha kalpa taru vesha ki pa sindh bhai vacha patita nam pavani pro vishnu vipo ಕಿಲೋ ಪ್ರೋಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಾಯ್ ಕ